So I feel like I should preface this studio vlog by saying this originally started off as a joke. My family and I are going um, to Western Canada for a family trip, we'll say, um, and it's like super scenic and for some reason my mom was just like looking up the hotel that we're staying at, you know, their accommodations and for some reason one of the things that you can apparently like buy into uh, is a painting kit. <laughs> Which, I mean, it does make sense because we're talking about, like, hella scenic uh, Canada here. Like, mountains, the whole shebang. Um, so them having, like, a $10 thing that you could buy into to, like, some cheesy thing, like, capture the moment forever or whatever. You know, this is also the part of the family that I did the poor painting night with and they're like already on me about like doing another art night. So that is kind of how this started. Is that, oh, you know, as a joke, we should buy into this $10 kit and you can paint something. And it's like, no, I'm gonna take my own. There was the first problem. I was like, I'm not using the random art supplies. I might as well just bring my own. This is where the decline starts. <laughs> Just, you know, thinking about the logistics of what I might decide to travel with, you know, doing these YouTube videos is not necessarily helping my impulse control of thinking this is like a brilliant idea because it's already turned into this video plus probably filming, um, painting there as well, which is, you know, probably great for content because you're gonna be seeing some, like, epic scenery in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, this is where the decline starts. And so, obviously, now I've started thinking like, okay, I'm apparently getting roped into taking a travel art supplies kit of some sort. You know, what exactly is that going to entail? You know, I have um, a smaller Winsor Newton palette that I could take, but then I was like, you know, normally I like doing uh, landscapes in gouache. So it's like, okay, we're going to make a gouache travel palette. And so it's like, okay, well, how are you going to do that? Am I going to, like, just t put some gouache paints that I want in these pans or and put them in the Winsor Newton, like, kit thing? Because obviously the pans come out and that. It's like, no, you know, one of the things that everyone uses to travel with is an Altoids tin. So it's like, okay, we're going to find one of those. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a travel palette in one of these Altoid mint tins, which I've already emptied this. This had a whole bunch of mints in it. Um, which thankfully because there was a minute there that I thought I wasn't gonna be able to actually get one of these in Canada And I was gonna like curse my existence for not buying one of these the last time I was in the States um, But thankfully they do sell them here in Canada if you are looking for them and are wondering about this But yes, I'm gonna go and turn this into like a super sweet little travel gouache palette I did actually already um, remove, or I tried to remove um, the majority of like the labels and stuff, like that all had like the um, nutrition information and um, a logo and all of that, so I already removed that um, with uh, some acetone. Can't think of names today. Um, and I'm actually going to paint or do something with this top part. That's why I wasn't worried about removing that. Like we're going to deck this thing out. As it is one of the reasons why I kind of thought of doing an Altoids tin um, travel palette, other than like, hello, this thing is like mega travel friendly. Um, especially be like, not even just the size of traveling. It also means that I don't need to like allocate so much of my paint to this palette um, because the wells will be so small. Um, because the other part of this is that when I was doing um, my 3D printed art supplies videos, one of the things that there is a whole bunch of 3D prints for is Altoid tin palettes and like Altoid tin just, um, you know, useful prints for Altoid tins, which is awesome. So I am going to go and find um, a 3D print file that I like and I'm going to print it for this. And I guess you will see which one I choose in a minute.
so here is the palette fully printed. I'm sure you can tell from the footage since I did film um, my printer actually printing this since you guys seem to like um, time-lapse footage of 3D print products. Um, the whole reason I actually like this other than I was a big fan of like the amount of wells and the shapes of the wells is because this particular file also had this awesome little um, mix area which yes this does all fit into the tin here if I open this with one hand. Um, I thought originally when I printed this that it was a little big and I probably could have resized it. I have a pretty accurate 3D printer but this actually fits in there really nicely. Um, the Altoid tin kind of has that lip. Um, so I guess it could have possibly been a bit bigger, um, but I might just, you know, glue this down in there. And then this palette, I think I'm actually going to find um, my magnet um, tape or paper, whatever you want to call it, and actually put some on the back of this so that it can magnetize to the top of the tin. But yeah, I'm super happy with how this little print turned out. I will make sure to leave um, the link to the file on Thingiverse for any of you that have 3D printers and might want to um, print this for yourself. Themselves. Yeah, it was a pretty easy print. I forget. I don't think it took more than three hours. It was like two hours and some odd minutes um, to print this, but I have it on pretty conservative settings, so I'm sure you could probably make your printer blow through it a lot faster than I did. I just wanted to, you know, have a nice smooth um, print job and not like stress my printer out too much. But yeah, I think I'm gonna do those little things that I said and then actually see about the paint for this thing. And when you're not using um, this mixing area, it does fit in perfectly on top of the paint there and it does close up perfectly. But I know I said at the beginning how I wanted to actually decorate this top part, um, which I already tested this. I can actually remove the lid itself. I'm really only concerned about the lid. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually kind of figure out what I'm going to do with the um, lid of this palette um, before I go and make any of the modifications, like adding the mag magnets and if I want to glue in the bottom part or whatever to that. I'm gonna deal with the lid first. I probably should have actually filmed how I got this off. Basically you just like um, bend the tin on kind of where the join or the how it makes basically the little hinge. You bend that so that you can actually like slip this out and it's all good. Now I possibly am going to try pour painting on this but I'm not sure how well the paint is actually going to stick to this, so first I'm going to spray prime it, um, and then I'll see about pour painting. I'm not, like, convinced that I want to pour paint it. I might just, like, acrylic paint it or something. Um, so first I'm actually going to take this outside and do a quick little coat of the matte white spray primer that I use for everything, like costume building and all of that kind of stuff. So I will come back and with this actually a solid color. So I brought it inside to dry. As you can see, it's now all primed in white. Brought it inside to dry because today is not exactly ideal spray painting conditions. So I figured letting it dry inside might be a good idea. Um, but now I guess we'll figure out um, the actual gouache paint that's going to go into this palette. So this is my custom gouache palette. Um, it is a Magello palette that I just bought on Amazon. I liked it because um, it closed up and I thought it would be nice. It had good reviews and it just overall looked good. But in here, um, we have all of my Windsor and Newton designers gouache. So yeah, overall I was just really happy with how this like pan layout was. Um, and plus I don't have like a ton of gouache colors. I ended up buying a set on eBay a long time ago of the um, Windsor Newton designer gouaches. I think it was a 12 set maybe. However many colors the set was, it was an amazing deal. Um, so I bought it and then I have since added a couple of colors here and there. I don't use gouache a ton so I didn't want to go crazy. I tend to use more of the acrylic gouache especially now um, but I do really like this palette um, but I actually have never made a swatch sheet for this. Some of these are super crumbly because I actually transferred um, some of the colors over from the palette I used to keep them in and they would always fall out of them. Um, this palette seems to like holding the colors in more, although some of them are just completely crumbly and beyond repair. So that's another benefit to this palette other than this really nice mixing area and it's just overall a very nicely made palette. Anyway, <laughs> off of that tangent, 
but since I switched these different pans from an old palette into this, I have since never made a swatch sheet of them. This has kind of been a weird like side project and it's just never really um, bothered me to actually create a swatch sheet, but because these are the colors that I want to use for my travel palette, I'm going to make a swatch sheet. Like, I don't even actually know what these colors are. Like, I could guess um, pretty... Um, accurately just because there aren't like a ton of colors and they're different enough that I could probably figure out um, between my tubes and just the color of the paint in the pans what the colors are. But right now I actually have no idea what any of these color names are. Um, so I'm going to make a swatch sheet, which I cut a piece of paper here um, that kind of fits in this if I ever wanted to store this page here or take it with me or whatever. Um, I'm going to make a swatch sheet swatching all of these colors so I can figure out which ones I want to take and um, actually fill up my travel palette with. So here is the finished and dried swatch sheet and of course the palette and now I'm going to figure out or attempt to figure out what exactly all of these colors are and label this. Um, so this is where I've been keeping my gouache paints, um, it's just basically in this um, container that the original apparently 10 tubes um, that I bought um, came in and I took the like divider out and then put the rest of the like one-off colors that I bought back in here. But yes, now I'm gonna go through and attempt to figure out which colors these exactly are. So that is the swatch sheet all figured out. The greens are definitely interesting. Luckily, you could kind of, you know, like process of elimination everything. Like, you know, every ultramarine basically looks like that. And then if that was obviously the indigo and then the turquoise um, blue is definitely greener and all of that. But on camera, they look a lot different, but in real life, they look really close. The permanent um, green light and the brilliant green um, look almost exactly alike. <laughs> as you can see um, in the tube uh, so they were fun and so were the um, reds because what is called primary red um, clearly that would probably not be the color that you would think it would look like um, but yeah so they now that they are all figured out I'm going to go and figure out which of these paints I want to put in my palette so here is the configuration that I think I'm gonna work with Obviously, um, the two easiest paints that I knew was absolutely going to need to actually go in this palette was white and black, so we've got zinc white and ivory black. Also, on a random note, for some reason I thought this palette only had 12 wells and it has 15, so I didn't actually need to narrow things down as much as I originally thought. Um, and obviously because I am mainly, like obviously I'm, I'm building this palette to do scenery <laughs> um, right off the bat. I, it, I don't think it's necessarily affected my color choices, but it's definitely something I, you know, kept in mind, you know, more natural, neutral colors. Um, but I think um, overall this kind of um, setup of 15 would be pretty similar, even if I wasn't kind of specifically thinking about painting landscapes and stuff. But anyway, off of the tangent. Next I have Yellow Ochre, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, um, the Windsor Violet. Uh, permanent yellow deep, permanent yellow, primary red. Now, originally I had um, spectrum red and alizarin crimson, um, but I thought that alizarin and the spectrum looked a little too similar, if you can see from the swatches, and I figured the primary red um, might work better in this palette instead, so that's why I flipped those out. Um, then I have permanent green middle, permanent green light, and then primary blue, ultramarine, and indigo. 
And so now I'm going to figure out um, the configuration that I actually want um, the paints in this palette um, immediately. Obviously, normally you would have a black and white possibly at the end, but because there are two mixing colors that you use a ton, I don't want them on an end slot since you lose a bit of paint because the corners are rounded. Um, so I'm going to figure out kind of the configuration. I'm thinking maybe white and black um, here and then the more neutral tones in the middle and then putting the other colors um, off and around the sides there. Um, but we'll see what I end up actually going with. So I laid out the paints in the configuration that I'm actually going to put them in this palette. Overall, I didn't mess with too much. Again, just kind of thinking about the paints that are actually going to be in the corners here. Um, really, the only one I switched around is normally I would pop, probably have this yellow um, to the side, kind of like, um, well, the opposite of this, just because this is the lighter yellow, and then it goes into the reds here. Um, but this I could see using a ton for mixing. It is primary yellow, so makes sense to have a larger quantity of it. Um, and then this uh, light green down here, I'm not too worried about having a little bit less of. I can obviously mix up um, more green if for some reason I run out. I put ultramarine in the corner just because I figured of the three blues, it's possibly the one that I'm going to use the least of. And then the purple, I might not really end up using at all. I just want to have that purple in this palette. Um, just in case because I personally would um, use a deep purple like that to mix in um, with different colors just to kind of give it an interesting look um, but I don't necessarily need a ton of it so that worked out perfectly. So yeah you kind of have the warm colors up here, the neutral colors in the middle and then the cooler colors in the bottom. So I'm now actually going to put some of each of these paints in this awesome little palette. <music> And there's my little travel palette. So I'm going to let that sit out so these can all harden up so they're all good to go um, for a couple of days. Um, and hopefully they'll stay in there okay. I'm sure that when they dry up, um, they'll kind of sink down in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. You can actually get quite a lot of paint in each of those wells, which is awesome. I'm not going to have a problem with having any of these colors run out. couple of days later now the lid has completely dried and I've actually put a gloss coat on top of it. Um, I just tried out this stuff. I've coated a couple of pore paintings um, with this stuff already and I wanted something that would obviously protect it but also not be tacky and this gives like a very resin like um, finish and so that's what that looks like. Um, you can kind of see where I accidentally stuck my finger in the half um, <laughs> dried uh, glazing which isn't great great but it is my personal palette so it's not the end and I know you're thinking like wow what a mess with all this extra paint and whatever but I actually want to talk about this because I actually use this extra skin stuff um, to do things I make like jewelry out of it and so that is actually why any of the extra paint like obviously I had to mix up way more paint than I needed for this small little palette which is kind of the hazard when you're doing smaller paints um, or smaller pore paintings, you do end up having like way too much paint, um, but I've found a very cool way of recycling all of this stuff, which hopefully I will be studio vlogging once I actually am doing stuff with this, because I might actually be putting some of the things that I make with the skins up for sale in my store. We'll, we'll see about the logistics of that, but yeah, overall I think the like extra things turned out really cool, so I'll be able to do a lot of interesting things with that. 
I also, while that was like in the day of that was drying, I made a tiny little swatch sheet um, for the palette. It can kind of stick in the palette, um, whether it stays there or I kind of hold on to it or kind of stick it onto my sketchbook when I'm using it or whatever. I just thought it would be a good reference to have in case I need it or, you know, I'm obsessed with swatch sheets, which you probably know by now, so tiny little one of those. And the palette itself is a lot drier now. Um, some of the colors that had a lot less like binding agent are like fully like hardened up, which is great. Um, this blue is still really gummy, um, but overall it's drying very, very well. Um, and yeah, that is the update on that. But now I think because this is completely dry and coated and everything, I'm actually going to put the palette um, together. <laughs> And here is my finished little travel palette. So obviously you can see it closes up perfect. Um, it's super easy to reattach um, the like uh, joins. Um, basically they're just kind of bent um, tins, so you just kind of bend those back in, so it's all good. Um, this palette here, I actually put a piece of like magnet um, tape roll stuff. Um, it's really thin, so it's not super strong, so it's very easy to kind of get in and out of the lid here. Um, I don't think, it just doesn't really seem like this is ever going to close if I kept it up here. Um, it's just how the tin is made. And then you have my tiny swatch sheet, and then the paint palette itself, which I did hot glue in there. I just didn't want it rattling around um, too much in here, but I did use a very small amount of hot glue, so if I ever wanted to take this out, I'm sure I could pry it out with no problem. Yeah, that is the tiny little palette, which I'm very impressed with and super happy with how it actually turned out. Um, I'm actually considering possibly making um, some of these to sell. Um, so kind of looking into the, log the logistics of how I could possibly make some like custom little tin palettes, like obviously not with the paint, but with the 3D printed parts um, and the like one of a kind um, lid. So we will see if that goes anywhere. But yeah, that is the finished palette. As for the other stuff that I'm actually taking, my mom just finished making me this super cool um, pencil case bag thing that is specifically made to fit what I'm taking. I'm going to show you the one thing that's in here right now because the bag was built off of this. Because um, this is the largest thing that I'll be taking. It is just a brand new um, watercolor moleskin. I have no idea what size this is. I think it's like 5 by 7 and I have no ruler right here so I can neither confirm nor deny um, the size of this particular moleskin. But it is... Um, one of the smaller, like the medium size um, watercolor um, moleskin. Definitely not the smallest. I'm pretty sure I have a smaller one than this. So kind of the small to mid sized watercolor moleskin notebook. And as for this bag itself, because it's super cool, um, at Star Wars Celebration Chicago, they actually, um, Amazon was giving away these free like reusable bags that you could use like to carry around your stuff or whatever. And you could just like pick them up every day. So you didn't need like to actually use plastic bags which was super awesome and she picked up a bunch <laughs> and yeah it's like that plasticky um like recycled material and she just cut one of the bags up um and turned it into this pencil case which is super awesome and perfect because like I said it was built specifically to fit all of the things that I'll be taking um, on this trip without like having like crazy amounts of excess room. Like obviously everything's going to fit um, very easily, um, but it's not like an overly large bag. So obviously pencil case, notebook, obviously my watercolor tin, and as for everything else, I'm not like a million percent sure what I'm going to take. I'm probably going to take this kneaded eraser or like a kneaded eraser just because it's, you know, super easy to travel with and um, because I'm planning on doing mostly landscapes, I will probably just take like one of my um, mechanical pencils. Um, these ones are really nice, so I'm not sure if I want to like risk anything happening to them, but probably a mechanical pencil so I don't have to worry about sharpening, but like I said, because I am planning on mainly doing landscapes, I'm also not really worried about having to draw too much or do any kind of technical drawing that 
um, I will need to like super worry about erasing or whatever. And then the final thing that I will definitely be taking are water brushes. Now I'm not sure how many um, quite yet or what sizes. I do have um, different ones, like I might take um, a cartridge or two. These ones are actually different. I have no idea what brushes these are. These were just the first water brushes I could find in my studio, so that's great. Um, but yeah, just water brushes, maybe one or two um, cartridges depending on what I'm feeling, like obviously empty, and then because these, um, the like nibs come off so easily, I know I have a bunch of Sakura Koi, um, like, uh, brush ends, um, so if I feel like I, I'm worried about brush sizes because they come off so easily, I might just pack a couple of the actual brush ends um, with like one cartridge or whatever. But yeah, pretty minimal packing. That's probably all I'm going to take. I know it's like pretty minimal, but I obviously don't need a lot and I'm not actually sure how much I might use any of this stuff anyway, depending on how like cold it is there or just, you know, extenuating circumstances and all of that. So don't want to go too, too crazy um, in the art supplies department. And that is actually going to be where I end this studio vlog. Excuse the whole get up, it's like winter in Canada today, so the studio is freezing and this is necessary. Uh, but thank you for joining me on the journey of building this little travel palette. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.